أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات آمالنا من يهده الله فلا مدل له من يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمدا عبده ورسوله Verily, all praise is for Allah, and we praise Him and seek His aid and ask for His forgiveness. And we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of ourselves and our evil actions. Whomever Allah guides, there is no one who can misguide Him. And whomever Allah misguides, there is no one who can guide Him. And I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. He has no partner, and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is his slave and his messenger. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa halu laghdatan min lisani yafahu qali. Oh my Lord, expand my test with assurance. Make my work easy and tie the knot in my tongue so that they understand my speech. Allahumma la sahla illa ma jahalta wa sahla wa anta tajalul huzna iza shita sahla. So, oh Allah, nothing is easy except what you have made easy. If you wish, you can make the difficult easy. Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inshallah, we'll start the, uh, our lesson. Um, I hope you're all doing well. And uh, let me share the screen with you. Inshallah. <clears throat> right. Okay. Now. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Duas. Starting with our duas, we have learned so far. I'll just make it slightly bigger so you guys can see. All right. Rabbi najini min al-qawm al-zalimin. My Lord, deliver me from these unjust people. Rabbi inni lima anzalta ilayya min khayrin faqeer. My Lord, indeed I am for whatever good you would send down in need. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa halu laghdatan min lisani yafqahu qali. My Lord, expand for me my breast with assurance and ease for me my task and untie the knot from my tongue that they may understand my speech. Inni ustu bi rabbi wa rabbikum min kulli mutakabbirin la yu'minu bi yawm al-hisab. Indeed, I have sought refuge in my Lord and your Lord from every arrogant one who does not believe in the day of account. A'uzu billahi anakuna min al-jahirin. I seek refuge in Allah from being amongst the ignorant. Rabbi inni zalam tu nafsi faqfiri. My Lord, indeed, I have wronged myself, so forgive me. Rabba nasrif anna azaba jahannama inna azabaha kana gharam. O oh, our Lord, a word from us, the torment of hell. Verily, its torment is uh, evil. It's gharama. And evil, indeed, it is as an abode and as a place to rest in. All right. So just recap quickly of the qualities of Ibadur Rahman. Uh, number one, they have humility. Tawadu. They are courteous even when they are treated harshly. They are diligent and consistent with their tahajjud. They always seek refuge or, or from Jahannam. They are not spendthrifts or ni neither they are stingy. They do not commit shirk, murder, or any kind of illegal relationships. So inshallah, now we are going to do the ayah number 72. And those who do not witness to falsehood, azur, and if they pass by some evil play or evil talk, they pass by it with dignity. If you remember in the first um, ayah, we also were, um, did uh, when they were, they, they have humility also when uh, someone addresses them um, and someone who is uh, very emotionally um, unstable, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that they, pass, they say salam. So they are people who when they pass by things which are wrong, you know, we live in a society nowadays where there are lots of things that are wrong, people are doing and um, you know, they, when they look at those things, they just pass away with dignity. Um, and they do not witness to falsehood. So they never give false statement. They never give false uh, statement against someone specially. 
All right, so that's the seventh characteristic of Ibadur Rahman. Actually, we'll look at seven and eight today, inshallah. And in our next class after Eid, we will finish them, uh, the, ten, the nine characteristics of Ibadur Rahman. So Ibadur Rahman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing that they do not bear witness, okay, uh, to falsehood. Um, what does it mean? So, and uh, they never attend gatherings of lewdness, immorality, indecent, and disbelief. The Ibadur Rahman will never associate themselves with these sort of gatherings, all right, as well as gatherings that consist uh, foul speech, all right. Um, that consist of foul speech and false words. The Ibadur Rahman also do not give testimony that is deliberately lying to someone, all right. So there is a hadith, uh, our Prophet Sallallahu said, shall I not inform you of the biggest of the great sins. And uh, the Sahaba said, yes, O Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said to join partners in worship with Allah, to be undutiful to one's parent. Um, and then he was lying down and he sat up and added, and I warn you against giving forged statements and false witness. I warn you against giving a forged statement and a false witness. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam kept saying that warning until we thought he would not stop. So like um, he's giving us um, and the Sahaba this big advice, uh, but uh, that, you know, never join partners with Allah, never do shirk and never be undutiful to your parents. But then he st st sits up. So he was lying and he sits up and he he's putting a lot of importance and emphasis on this that, you know, never give a statement. So, for example, I'll tell you in simple words. So you um, and your friend is playing and your friend hits someone, for example, and that person is not your friend. So when the teacher comes or your parent come and they ask you, uh, and the, the friend who has hit someone, he says, no, I didn't hit him. And then they ask you, uh, did he hit? You saw it, can you tell us what happened? And because he's your friend, you might say, oh no, no, he didn't hit him. So that's like giving a false statement. Like, uh, especially um, even though he was your friend, uh, even if it was um, your sibling, if they have done something wrong and someone is asking you what happened, you have to give the true statement. You have to tell, yes, actually, my friend hit someone. You can't, you can't go and give a false statement. So, and it becomes more serious when, when grown-ups do that as well. So it's really important to remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watch, watching us. And it is really important that we never tell lies uh, even if it's our friend, if it's our uh, family member, you don't have to go and tell on people as well unnecessarily. But if if there is a situation when someone's hurt or someone's done something wrong to another person and you have seen it and people are asking you about it, you have to be honest and you have to tell them exactly what happened. Neither you have to tell more nor you have to tell less. All right. So our Prophet ﷺ is warning us against giving false statements. Right. So just remember that. So immoral gatherings, what are they? Azur, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Quran, Al Ibn al-Jawzi, uh, Rahim Allah, and there are other scholars, he's a scholar, uh, who mentions, it's being, it means idols belonging to mushrikun. Correct? It means music. So they are different, and you can see it says opinion of ad dahak opinion of Muhammad ibn al-Hanafiyya and Makhul. So these are um, either sahabas or uh, scholars who um, uh, who are expert in uh, tafsir of Quran? Okay, means shirk. Uh, so there is there are different opinions from different sahabas and and the uh, tabaeens, the students of sahabas. It means games in the time of jahiliya. That's the opinion of Ikrima. It it means lies and falsehood. Um, Qatada and Ibn Juraj. Uh, it means false witness. That is lie deliberately. That is the opinion of Ali ibn uh, Abi Talha. All right, it means festivity and celebration of mushrikun. It means treacherous or treasonable assemblies. So basically different people um, have given us different opinions. So what does Azur means? That if they go to places where, you know, people are actually basically, you should see if they are disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we know what disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks like in big gatherings, you know, where there is no remembrance of Allah, people are just... Uh, you know, there is loud music, dance, all sorts of mixed gatherings, all of these things. Um, of course, they are against uh, the 
prescribed way of celebrations. I mean, we are going into uh, the Eid al-Adha and it is a big celebration. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our Prophet ﷺ never stopped us from having good fun. But remembering there are some boundaries Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, prescribed us. So when, if they do go and we, we live in society, especially nowadays where we do see that, what do we do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, if they pass by some evil play or evil talk, and especially gatherings where people are talking about other people, when people are bad biting, when people are doing riba, they are saying bad things about other people, especially even sometimes, even in our home, sometimes that happens. You might see someone, a group of your friends or family members sitting and talking about other people. So what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us? If they go uh, and pass by that and you can't say anything, then you pass with dignity. You don't say, you don't look at them and make faces at them. You just go and walk with in a dignified manner. All right. And you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But remember, we never think that we are better than those people. We can pray for them. If you are able to, you can tell them, remind them of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can talk about something um, nice or you can just quietly and dignify in a dignified manner, especially if it's something which you know doesn't concern us, we should walk away, right? And what is love means? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has used this word love in this ayah. It means evil talk, shirk, statement of indecencies, talking about wrong things, bad things, all right? Any talk or conversation that is thoughtless, done without thinking, and it is of no benefit, you know? There is no benefit in talking about those things and people are talking. All of this is love. And it is meaningless and useless actions or pastime. Sometimes people just, they are on their video games and they're just playing, playing all the time. They're not doing their salah and they're not doing anything. And it's just a waste of time. So it's all called love, which is useless. Um, all right. Um, um, you can play games. It's not that you're not allowed to play games and things, but always remember there is a time. And anything that is taking you away from Allah's remembrance, and especially your five daily prayers, then it is always considered a waste of time, all right? So that's the seventh characteristic, that they do not give false testimony. They do not attend sinful and immoral gatherings, such as gatherings that promote shirk, shirk foul speech, music concerts, treacherous assemblies. They do not participate in useless conversation and pastime. And if they come across such gatherings, they will stay away and leave in an honorable manner, all right? And then, the next ayah says, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِّرُوا بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِمْ لَمْ يَخِرُّوا عَلَيْهَا سُمُّمْ وَأُمْيَانِ And those who, when they are reminded of the ayat of their Rabb, fall not deaf and blind thereat. What does that mean? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, and that can be any of us, that this next category can include you or me, anyone who is reading this right now. What does it mean? It means, Looking back, um, just asking that, think about it, that how many of us read Quran? So ayat of Allah are, of course, the ayat of Quran. But sometimes even like if you're in a gathering and if you are a part of a gathering where people, you are involved in something bad and someone reminds you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or someone talks about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, immediately, even if we are, and we are human beings and if we are sinful sometimes and we make something and we someone reminds us of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is saying it doesn't fall on the deaf and blind. Like it's they're not blind and deaf to what people are saying about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or Prophet وسلم, or something beautiful. So it it touches their heart. So you know how many of us read the Quran? Sometimes we listen to some beautiful uh, bayan of uh, a scholar, or sometimes we listen to our parents who are talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or our elders, your teachers. And you might say, okay, yeah, it was nice. I like it. But, uh, well, and then you just close it. You read Quran, you close it, and you get on with. So uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that believers are those who in another ayah, in um, another surah, Al-Anfal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when Allah is mentioned, they feel a fear in their hearts. And when his ayat are recited, they increase their faith. And they put their trust in their Lord. So um, people who, when, when you hear Quran, it makes you feel good. And I tell you, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you might feel, find it boring. But if you truly understand, and inshallah, this is what we are trying to do in our class, that eventually we start learning the meanings of the ayat and the 
uh, especially the words that are used in Quran. So when we listen to them, not only we understand them, but also our, it touches our heart and it increases our, us in our faith and our love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So um, Ibadur Rahman are not like disbelievers who are not affected uh, or once sometimes like, you know, you are doing, we are doing something wrong, but when we hear the story of Prophet Sallallahu or we hear the ayah of Quran and we say, Ya Allah, please make us like those people. You're wishing to be good. Uh, you're wishing to be like those people whom Allah loves or Allah mentions in Quran, like Musa alayhi salam, like um, Luqman, um, um, Rahim Allah, and like, you know, uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Isa alayhi salam, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, any one of those prophets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about. Uh, and we think, I wish I was like these people. So, you know, uh, wishing to be like those people. And uh, so Quran, it means it's touching you, right? So whenever uh, there comes down a surah, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned, this is uh, um, again surah Tawbah, whenever there comes down a surah, some of them say, which of you has had his faith increased by it? As for those who believe, it has increased their faith and they rejoice it. But as for those whose heart is a disease, it will add suspicion because you will find many people nowadays, even in the time of Prophet and even now, they will put, they will say, "Oh, there is this in Quran, there is this in Quran." They will find, you know, arguments about it, and that is what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is describing. That some people it will increase their iman, and some people it will just be like, you know, it doesn't matter what you tell them; they will always find faults. In even the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may Allah not make us amongst those people. And may Allah make us amongst those people who are uh, the Ibadur Rahman. Ibn al Qayyim says, the people of Quran are those who read it and act upon it, even if they haven't memorized it. So even if you haven't memorized the Quran, it is important that when you read it, you understand what we are saying. That's why we are learning these nine characteristics of Ibadur Rahman. And these are the people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about, that He loves them. Um, special people. Okay. Sorry, my so, the hearts of Ibadur Rahman are attended. Uh, please mute yourself, whoever it is. Mm. Please mute yourself. Um, the hearts of Ibadur Rahman are attentive and moved by the ayat of Allah. Its commandments, its prohibitions, its reminders, its stories and their limbs carry out good actions. They listen to the ayat of Allah with khushu and are determined to implement the commandments prohibition. So they are the people who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's ayat and it touches them and they want to change themselves as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling them. All right. So inshallah, two more characteristics left and we will do it inshallah in the next one. So uh, just uh, keep reading. Now coming to our next lesson, alhamdulillah, so, so far as um, we all know, we have been doing Arab and we have been doing learning about the status of the ism, all right? So, um, now today we are going to do heavy and light ism. What is heavy and light ism? So lightness and heaviness is actually not from among the four properties. So remember, ism has four properties and we are doing the first property, which is Arab. If you remember, there are four properties of ism and all those properties, inshallah, we will do. Uh, and the first one is Arab, which is status. Um, and then Adad, which is number, jins, which is gender, and ism, which is type. So, but we are doing uh, the Arab or the status. And, it is lightness and heaviness is not from the four properties, but it is actually um, a discussion of light and heavy. It's a subtopic, okay? So it falls under status. So now that you know um, how to differentiate between Rafa, Nasp, and Jar, like there are different markers. You know that Mun, Man, Min, Un, An, In. So um, you know what are Rafa, Nasp, and Jar? We will learn about different variations, different forms. Sometimes they take different forms. So notice every word in Muslim chart ends in the noon sound, like the tanween sound. Yeah. So remember, when you look at it, let's look at it. 
so this is muslim chart muslimun musliman muslimin ani aini aini una ina ina so always noon convene sound or the noon sound right so this is a normal uh, um ism all right and it's generally by default all the ism are heavy so they are called heavy when they when you see uh, a tanween it means it's a um, basically heavy ism to make a word light all you have to do is to remove the noon sound at the end and to get rid of the noon sound in arabic using use the following rules if the word ends in the double accent which is a tanween to haraka replace the double accent with a single haraka so instead of un you will say u so muslimun would become muslimu okay muslimatun will become muslimatu if the word ends with a noon sorry if the word ends in the letter noon all you have to do is drop the noon for instance the word muslimuna becomes muslimu all right so you will see those words in quran um where sometimes there is one haraka only like when we say um well alhamdu is a different one because it has an al and al doesn't like tanween but inshallah we will see many words in quran where sometimes there is a uh, there is the noon is dropped or there is a one haraka so why is it it's a light ism it's called light when it has one haraka so an ism is made light by removing the extra noon sound do this by removing the tanween or the extra noon remember one thing you have to remember this al doesn't like the mean but an ism with al isn't considered light so with the if there is a word which has al it will always be considered heavy even though there is a single haraka um like when we say alhamdu although there is a du it's not dun it's always considered heavy because of al now look at the muslim chart in the light so it becomes muslimu muslimu muslima muslima muslimi muslima muslimai muslimai muslimu muslimi muslimi and so is feminine muslimatu muslimata muslimati muslimata muslimatai muslimatai muslimatu muslimati muslimati and you have to remember one thing that your tajweed and your and then your knowledge of your haraka should be really good that's why you are learning single haraka if you are doing tajweed you know that they do one haraka two haraka four uh, four uh, stretch like you know so when you say muslima muslimu it's one haraka when you say muslimu it's two haraka because and it is important because um then you know this is a masculine plural but it is light here this is masculine singular and it is light all right so remember this i will share this with you anyway and uh, you can also look at these charts so um this is a, a light muslim chart muslimu muslima muslimi muslima see the noon is dropped muslimai muslimai muslimuna becomes muslimu muslimina becomes muslimi muslimi all right feminine muslimatu muslimata muslimati muslimata muslimatai muslimatai muslimatu muslimati muslimati right so ism status light versus heavy default status of an ism is always heavy you will always it should be heavy there has to be a reason for an ism to be light inshallah we will learn those reasons as we go there are four reasons for an ism to be light what why do we not have a tanween and why do we um, drop the noon why we will learn as we go not today but inshallah uh, you have to remember that ism can is a normal default is always heavy but it can be made light why when you make light you take the tanween away or extra noon you remove the extra noon at the end of it all right so um and then there is an exercise here <clears throat> which where you have to just look at it and uh, see whether it's a light or a heavy ism all right we are not doing rafa nazjar at the moment just light and heavy right um and then inshallah we will 
also do the the reason for ism to be light why do we have light isms i will give you one reason today and that means when there is an absolute no so when you say la ilaha illallah so ilaha should be ilahan normally but with la ilaha illallah it becomes light why because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us there is absolutely definitely no god except allah ilaha means ilah means god so no there is no god so sometimes when you see allah and there is a light ism it means allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is putting extra emphasis on it allah is saying absolutely no absolutely no because you will see other in other places in quran that there is a la but there is a normal ism like la bay'un la khullatun wa la shafa'atun so here it's normal it means no nothing something's happening there no no trading no shifa no so that but when you see a la and there is a light ism it means a, there is an extra emphasis so when we say la ilaha illallah or when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in quran allah la ilaha illah allah who is he there is no god except la ilaha so wherever we see la in a light ism it means there is an extra emphasis on no but not everywhere so when you see it this is normal this is normal right so we will study this more but inshallah um i will take questions if you don't understand it we can go over it again um and we can do the first few ones like maybe first five ones uh, in the class and i would like you to do the rest of them as your homework all right someone's raising a hand so they can um i'm sada i aiza can unmute them and then they can ask questions assalamu alaikum my name is hania wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh yes hania um so number 1 yeah can you do this number 1 what yeah. is the word muallimi and yeah. i think it's um like very good yes because the normal will be muallimina muallimi yeah. like muslim very good mashallah all right next person who is next assalam alaikum ustada wa alaikum assalam wa barakatuh who is this rania aidan all right uh, can you do the second one is it Can you read it, or do you have? A yes, question? I can. Okay. Dalibatun. Dalibatun. Yes. So, what is it? Is it heavy um, or is it light? I think it's heavy. Heavy. Yeah. Why is it heavy? Because it has a dumbatain. Good. Very good. It's he- it has a dumbatain. If it was talibatu, then it would be light. It's heavy. You're right. Okay. Next person. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Who's this? Romana. Okay, Romana. Third one. Qamisun. Mhm. This word is uh, heavy because there is a dhammatain at the end of the Mashallah, very good. There is a tanween. There is a dhammatain. There are two haraka. It means it's a heavy. Very good. Who's next? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Who's this? Uh, Rohan. Okay, Rohan. Number four. Aina. Hmm. What is it? Is it light or is it heavy? It's light. Yeah. Why do you think it's light? Because it only has. one uh, yeah one haraka and also there must be a noon it's like a muslima aina so there is a noon there which is not there all right so muslima or aina are quite similar basically the word actually is ainani but the noon is dropped for some reason okay so that's why right who's next
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته. Who's this? I am Muhammad Usman Sajid. Yes, Muhammad Usman. Um, tell us um, that number five one. What is the word? Kalimati. Mm -hmm. Hmm. And is it light or is it heavy? Light. Why? You have to tell me why. Because it because it is one haraka. Yeah, it's a kasra. It's not a kasra time. There are no there are no, there aren't two kasra. So it means it's a light. It's like muslimati, kalimati. All right. So inshallah, um, I will take if you have any questions, we you can do the rest of it in your homework. Remember that uh, when there is a word like aina or muallimi, there is a noon missing. You have to write that, noon missing. And then if there is a word like kalimati, it means there is a haraka, like there is a tanween uh, missing. There is a single haraka. So I want you to do it like this. Kalimati, light, single haraka. Ainani, light, noon missing. And you need to tell me which one it is. It is from this one, muslima, muslimani, ainani, all right? And then, of course, this one is, Kamisun, like Muslimun, so it's heavy, right? So you have to write that. Uh, the reason for it to be uh, light or heavy, like we don't know uh, the actual reason, but why are you saying this is heavy or why are you saying this is light? You have to give write that as well, yeah? Um, anyone, if you have questions, um, or we will just go over a few things about, of course, the month. We are in the blessed month, and now we are in the last few blessed days. So we will talk a little bit about that, I was thinking. Uh, but if you have any questions, uh, please ask. Uh, the homework is just this. You can read the qualities of Ibadur Rahman, um, numbers seven and eight. Think about it. I, I want you to remember that we are in the last blessed uh, few days of the 10 um, you know, days Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Quran as well. Um, and one of the things we should be increasing is our zikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the tasbih, tahmeed, and tahleel. So, um, and we will talk a little bit about it. So your homework will be just to, um, you know, keep on doing, especially till the 10th of Zul Hajjah, just um, um, read more Quran and just go over these um, qualities of Ibadur Rahman. Last, next week, uh, we won't have a class. After that, the class we will have, inshallah, we'll, we will actually finish the properties of Ibadur Rahman and we'll go back to our Sirak discussion, inshallah. Uh, but um, because um, I think it's really beautiful what we have covered, I would really like you to look at these things, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning one thing in Quran and then how it is uh, mentioned in the Hadith of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa um, right? And then your homework is just to do this. Uh, I don't want to give you too much homework. Just read over the ayat. Uh, sorry, the description we have done of these two ayat. And then uh, this is your homework to just complete this chart. Um, identifying light and heavy, all right? Um, and I, if you don't have any anything, we can go over this, inshallah. So, the of course, we know that the 10, 10 days of Zul Hijjah are one of the most blessed days and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions them in Quran. And um, I mean, I just opened this website and it has about, it talks about four things to do in the blessed 10 days of Zul Hajjah. We are already very close to 9th of Zul Hajjah. All right. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Al-Fajr, Ashr, by the dawn, by the 10 nights. The oath, uh, basically, it um, according to many ulama, it's the greatness and sacredness sacredness of these 10 nights in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, all right. The Prophet Sallam talks about uh, that in Al uh, and it's in Al-Bukhari that there are no days in which righteous deeds are more beloved to Allah than these 10 days. And the people ask not even jihad for the sake of Allah. He said not even jihad for the sake of Allah except in the case of a man who went out giving himself his wealth for up for the cause of Allah and came back with nothing. So um, it's, they are very, very blessed days. So the first thing you, of course, do um, on the ninth day of Zul Hajjah, most of you can, if you can, 
possibly do it, you can fast, all right? So it's a beautiful, um, you know, ibadah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves fasting. So do that, all right? So 10th of Zulhajjah, uh, 10th of Zulhajjah is the day of Eid al-Adha. So we don't fast on that day, all right? 9th of Zulhajjah is the day when we will fast for those who are not doing Hajj. Forgiveness for two years of sin, minor sins for fasting on the day of Arafah. All right. So um, I'm not going to go into uh, detail, but just remembering and I'll share the link of this website so you can read that as well. That the that it is, um, again, um, a very uh, honorable thing to do and fast. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives us. All right. Uh, reciting Tasbih, Tahmeed, Tahleel and Takbir. So it is a sunnah to recite Takbir, Allahu Akbar, Tahmeed. Alhamdulillah, tahleel is la ilaha illallah and tasbih is subhanallah. All right, during the first 10 days of Zilhajjah. All right, these words should be recited abundantly in the masajid, homes, streets, and every place where it is permissible to remember Allah and glorify Allah. There are certain places where we don't remember, I mean, we don't uh, do these things, especially when, like, you know, when you're going to their bathroom. We don't do uh, the zikr of Allah. Uh, you do a dua before you enter it and you come out, but you don't uh, do that. But except for that, uh, you know, if you're sitting at home and you're doing nothing, just just keep doing uh, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, allahu akbar, uh, you know, la hawla wa la quwata, astaghfirullah. But especially uh, the tasbih, like subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah. All right. Um, reciting the takbirat and tashriq from the ninth on, uh, to the 13th of Zulhijjah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Wallahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi ha. All right. So, um, and what does it mean? Of course, Allah is the greatest. Allah is the greatest. There is no deity beside Allah, and Allah is the greatest. Allah is the greatest, and all praises are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only Walillahi ha. All right. So, um, you can recite it after every first salah. If you don't, don't remember it during a, a like normal day, from on the day of um, from the ninth of Zulhijjah we start that, and then uh, we keep on doing it for the three days we celebrate Eid. So whenever you are doing your salah, do this, uh, you know, um, uh, these takbirat. But remember, just you know what did what did Rasulullah sallallahu said in one of the hadiths of the Zikr, la ilaha illallah. The best remembrance is la ilaha illallah. So even if you're not doing anything, you just keep on saying, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. It's a really beautiful thing. And of course, offering the qurbani. Uh, and some of you must have, have now you have got your um, cows or your goats or your sheep or your rams. Um, and I'm, I'm sure it's a beautiful thing, especially people who are living in Pakistan or um, in, in those countries where you are allowed to, like, you know, you buy the animal a few days before you. And then you look up when I was a little girl, we used to keep um, decorate our animal and we used to feed them, look after them. And we would get really sad on the day of Qurbani when they were being sacrificed. But now that reminds us of the sacrifice of our Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam when he was even ready to sacrifice his son um, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake. And once I had a little, um, you know, pet lamb and it grew and it grew big. And then when, it, and it was the time of Qurbani, uh, my father, and it had been with us for uh, more than a year and actually two years probably. And then uh, my father asked uh, me and my sister if we could do, uh, do that. And it was a really sad thing for us. But I think also remembering that anything you give for Allah and especially the thing you love most. And we were young children. We were like you guys. Um, we were very sad, but I think um, it's a good thing that you always give Allah the thing which you love the most, all right? Um, um, you don't have to uh, sacrifice your pet goat or, but you know, it was a beautiful thing. And as we grew up, I think it made us more uh, happy that, you know, we did something and we gave something which was more very beloved to us. Uh, so remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, it is not their meat nor their blood that reaches Allah. It is their piety. And that we give Allah. So Allah doesn't need the Allah doesn't need uh, these animals. But why are we sacrificing them? To a remember that we uh, we love Allah Subhanahu wa Taala more than anything. He is anything can be sacrificed for Him, and then we give 
the like you you keep one part for yourself one part for your family friends and then one you give to poor people and i think that is one of the most important thing to remember to poor people which you are giving and all of this is not reaching allah but our good deeds what we feel in our heart is reaching allah subhanahu wa taala right so just remember that um and you can tell me uh, um that what you guys are if you uh, guys have bought an animal so we can talk about it a little bit after uh, this and doing more good deeds so maybe you know even smiling at people more helping your mom and dad a lot if you've got grandparents looking after them your siblings your neighbors giving food uh, looking after the poor people um, uh, you know it's really hot in some countries so making sure you've got a little uh, you know bowl of water for the birds outside your um you know windows or house wherever you are and um taking care of animals um and remembering allah doing uh, you know there and this page has mentioned many beautiful things like doing salah reciting quran you know showing good character giving charity it's really uh, important respecting honoring our parents and then doing many nawafil like you can do extra nafil um you can do salatul duha you can do tahajjud uh tahiyatul wudu there are many prayers which you can do and remember always increasing in glorification and remembrance of allah subhanahu subhanallah alhamdulillah allahu akbar la ilaha illa allah la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah astaghfirullah subhanallah alazim you know subhanallah wa bihamdihi subhanallah alazim and they are beautiful um tasbihat they have given so subhanallah alhamdulillah wa la ilaha illa allah wallahu akbar wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah alazim that's your third kalima la ilaha illa allah wahdahu la sharika lahu lahu almulku wa lahu alhamdu yuhyi wa yumitu wa huwa hayyu la yamutu abadan abada zul jalal wa ikram bi yadihi alkhair wa huwa ala kulli shay these are this is one of the most beloved kalima uh, uh, to allah subhanahu wa taala so i'm sure you guys are doing it and hopefully when i am doing this with you you are doing it at your home uh, right now with me okay so let's do it together you don't have to unmute yourself let's do all of this together and then you can tell me and unmute yourself and tell me if you have bought an animal in and if you have uh, bought um something for the day of of course qurbani so let's do it bismillah okay allahu akbar allahu akbar la ilaha illa allah wallahu akbar allahu akbar walillahil hamd subhanallah alhamdulillah allahu akbar la ilaha illa allah لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله أستغفر الله سبحان الله العظيم وبحمده سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو حي لا يموت ابدا ابدا ذو الجلال والاكرام بيده الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير all right and the shortened version is what لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء hopefully you guys have recited it in your homes with me inshallah all right and make dua please make dua for me for yourself especially for yourself first for your family members for your parents and for for your teachers and for all the muslims around the world for the people in palestine for the people in syria yemen uh, rohingya uighur everywhere where um, on this planet where muslims are may allah alleviate their sufferings and may allah make things easy for them amen all right and um, inshallah do you have any thing to share with me about qurbani you can who wants to tell me quickly we have like 10 minutes uh, if you have bought any animal for your eid al adha all right let's stop sharing now i'll share this link with you as well all right so i'll tell you ab- about myself uh we i live in new zealand and i have uh in the past we used to do qurbani here as well 
especially when my children were younger and uh, I wanted them to see how it's done and they would be a part of it. And when we went back to Pakistan, so that's where I'm from, Karachi, we actually went and we actually uh, did a, a qurbani and uh, my son, especially, he loved the looking after the animal and, you know, doing everything. So, um, um, but now uh, we don't do it here, but we send it over to Pakistan. But hopefully you will, inshallah, um, enjoy your Eid. Um, and let's finish our class. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika nashadu wa la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. May Allah accept our efforts, forgive our sins, and may Allah make us Ibadur Rahman, and may Allah bless us in these 10 days, especially on the two great days that are coming, uh, the 9th and the 10th of Zil Hajjah, and may Allah accept us amongst those uh, who are his righteous, and may Allah bless us with Hajj next year, and may Allah make all the things which we wish for in, uh, in this world and the next world easy for us if it is for his pleasure. Ameen, Samameen. Inshallah, I'll see you guys um, not the next week. Um, I think I will see you. So it's uh, 26. I'll see you on uh, 2nd of August, inshallah. All right. Okay. So uh, look after yourselves and uh, inshallah, I'll share everything with you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.